Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to tell you about um, some work that we did uh, about a year ago. This is joint work with uh, Sanjam Garg, Mohammed Mahmoudi, and Amir Mohammed, all of whom are sitting in the audience. Uh, the main theme of our work is uh, about proving limitations for non-black box techniques, uh, especially in the context of public encryption versus one-way functions. Um, I will try to give you a sense of um, how to go about proving non-black box separations, and also I will uh, mention a few open problems that I find interesting uh, in this area. All right, so uh, what is the starting point? Um, as we all know, a long-standing open problem in crypto is whether we can build public encryption or even key agreement from one-way functions. And we know by a classical result of, of Ipagliazzo and Rudish that you cannot use one-way functions in a black box way to build public key encryption. This uh, immediately raises the question of whether we can use non-black box techniques in order to bridge the gap between public encryption and uh, one-way functions. Okay, so uh, in order to get a sense uh, of this question, let's look at the set of common non-black box techniques that are typically used in crypto, okay? Uh, these techniques can be roughly split into two categories. Uh, the first category that I call low tech uh, contains techniques that can essentially be realized using one-way functions, like garbling, zero knowledge proofs, witness indistinguishability, and so on. Uh, the second category that I call high tech um, contains techniques that require heavy hammers like um, fully homomorphic encryption, IO, and so on. Uh, for example, when you use FHE in a construction, you would typically homomorphically evaluate a circuit uh, on an encrypted input. And this requires us to use the code of the circuit, which is a non black box usage of the circuit. But if you want to understand whether we can bridge the gap between public encryption and one-way functions, we should really focus on techniques that can be realized using one-way functions, namely techniques from the low-tech category. We will be focusing on garbling techniques, mainly because uh, garbling techniques will also allow us to capture ZK and WI-based techniques. Uh, I will talk more about this later, yes. No, 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 uh, okay, um, think about it this way. Suppose that uh, you have a one-way function, okay? You build a PRG uh, out, of the, out of the one way function. And then, and then you want to prove in NISIC, uh, you want to prove in a NISIC way a property about the PRG, okay? So, so in that point, you need, you need to work with the circuit description uh, of the PRG. So, so it's a non-black box usage. Oh, uh, right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, specifically, uh, what I'm talking about is situations where you will make non-black box usage uh, of the 1B function. So uh, I will give some examples and uh, uh, you will see what I mean. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, what is a garbling scheme? Uh, a garbling scheme consists of a gar a garbling algorithm which takes as input a circuit C and outputs a garbled circuit together with n pairs of garbled labels. And if you have the garbled circuit and a sequence of garbled labels corresponding to the bits of an input X, you can use the evaluation algorithm to compute C of X. Okay. And for security, we require that um, a garbled circuit for a circuit C and a sequence of garbled labels corresponding to the bits of an input X should reveal nothing beyond C of X. And uh, in particular, it can be simulated just by knowing C of X. Uh, I wanna mention a point here, which is, as you can see, the security property of garbled circuits is, is a one time. Uh, what it means is that in order to have privacy, um, I should make sure that my garbled circuit will be evaluated on a single sequence of uh, garbled labels. Uh, in other words, if the adversary somehow gets his hands on two different sequences of garbled labels for my garbled circuit, then I cannot ensure any, guarantee, any privacy guarantee for my, garbled, for my garbled circuit. This is a very important point that I want you to remember uh, because I will get back to it later. And in fact, this is what in some sense makes uh, garbling weaker than uh, obfuscation. Okay, um, another point that I wanna mention is that as you can see, the garb algorithm uh, takes as input a circuit C. 
And if C is the circuit of a cryptographic function, this would be a non-black box usage uh, of that function. This is how uh, garbling uh, leads to non-black box constructions. Okay. Um, finally, I want to mention that throughout my talk, I'm going to focus on the so-called decomposable or projective garbling, which is exactly the notion that I described here. Uh, what it means is that we have a garble label for every bit value of the input wire, and you can sort of mix and match uh, different labels. Uh, make sense? Okay. Reusable garble circuits, like. Okay, okay, so uh, I will talk about it uh, at some point. All right, so uh, back to our main question, uh, we asked whether we can build public encryption from one-way functions in a non-block uh, way using garbling. Uh, this question is relevant, firstly, because we know that uh, we can realize garbling using one-way functions. And also because it turns out that garbling is an extremely powerful uh, non-black box technique. Uh, in particular, in recent years, we have seen some exciting results showing how to overcome some known black box barriers using garbled circuits. Okay, so uh, back to our main question. Again, uh, we asked whether we can bridge the gap between public key encryption and one-way function using, using garbling-based and uh, non-black box techniques. And the answer is, any guesses? Okay, so the answer cannot be yes because if it was a positive answer, it would, uh, uh, it would be out of scope for this workshop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. But uh, surprisingly, we showed that the answer is not no either. The answer is essentially no. Uh, so this word essentially is hiding an awfully lot of details. And, um, and, uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, dissect this word uh, essentially for you. But uh, for those of you who are familiar with the literature, this is the same uh, a separation mo model that was used in previous work by uh, Berkersky et al. and uh, Osharov and Segev. Okay, now. Okay, so uh, the plan for the rest of my talk is as follows. I will first uh, briefly go over our separation model and then I will describe the main ideas behind our separation proofs. Uh, let me take a detour um, for now and remind you how typically black box separations are proved in cryptography. And then we will see the challenges that we will have in adapting these methodologies in our non-black box setting. Uh, in order to prove that a primitive Q is not implied by a primitive P in a black box way, the most natural, uh, the most typical approach is to define an oracle O that ideally implements P, okay? For example, if P is a one-way function, you can think of O as a random oracle. And then the next step is to show that any possible construction of Q that uses O as an oracle can be broken by an adversary that makes a polynomial number of queries to O, okay? So now let's see what the challenges are in implementing this methodology in our non-black box setting. So in order to do this, remember we should describe an ideal oracle for one-way functions and garbling schemes. To model the one-way function part, we can think of a random oracle F, okay? So th this is uh, very easy. The next question is how to model garbling. And what is the challenge? The challenge is that we would like to be able to garble circuits that are somehow depend on the random oracle F. For example, you have black box access to F, and you would like to be able to, uh, you, you would like to build a PRG uh, uh, out of F, and you might want to garble that uh, PRG. 
But if you want to garble that PRG, you need to have a circuit description of that PRG. If you want to have a circuit description of that PRG, you need to have a circuit description of F. But we don't have a circuit description of F because we have black box access to F. Okay? So, so while there seems to be a tension between the mere fact that we have black box access to the Oracle F and that we would like to be able to uh, do garbling for circuits that somehow depend on F. Uh, in a nutshell, we resolve this challenge by uh, having uh, black box access to a, 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 to a garbling oracle that not only garbles um, uh, normal circuits with AND and OR gates, but also garbles uh, oracle-aided circuits, circuits with uh, F gates in them. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, uh, I will talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in other words, what is what is what is happening is that we are capturing the garbling-based non-black box usage um, by having black box access uh, to a to a garbling oracle that also garbles uh, oracle-aided circuits. Again, the, this is. Uh, the same model that was previously used by Brakersky et al. and uh, Osharov and Segev. Okay. So now um, our task would be to show that public key, uh, public key encryption is impossible with black box access to a one-way function oracle and to a garbling oracle that are garbled uh, circuits with one-way function gates in them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so um, as our, uh, as the main theorem of our result, as the main theorem of our paper, we show that you cannot uh, build public encryption in a black box way uh, using these oracles. Uh, one point that I wanna mention is that our impossibility result holds even if the public key encryption is not perfectly correct, even if it has a decryption error. Okay, um, I will talk in a moment about what this impossibility results uh, uh, means, but I want to take uh, questions now. Yes. So are there positive results in this double garbling, or does this cover everything that we know about it? So um, right now, we don't know how to extend our impossibility result to situations where you would want to garble a circuit that also has garbling gates in it. Uh, I'm asking, is this useful anywhere? Uh, my intuition is, is that you can uh, extend the impossibility result uh, to that setting. No, I don't think that's all. Uh, it will bridge the gap. No. Still asking if there's like, we know many words in the literature where something like this. The only thing that I'm thinking about is maybe this uh, IO of IO. Which one? IO of IO. No, no, I want garbling and garbling. Is there any other, you know what? Okay. One person could garble a circuit okay. and give it to the other person, and the other person could take that circuit and re garble it. That would be the right. very natural setting, which is not. Why do you say you're using the example you was running or the example you did? Don't they, like, if you were able to garble a circuit? Again, there's OT there, so it's uh, not low tech, but right. OT is not low tech anymore? Yeah, yeah. because we're just working with one function. <laughs> oh, it's in one function, sure. You want to construct OT, right? Okay. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, our uh, impossibility result rules out constructions under which you would garble circuits that have one-way function gates in them. Uh, examples of such usage include uh, Beaver's protocol for OT extension and the garble RAM constructions. For example, um, in Beaver's protocol, what happens is that you garble a PRG. And you can think of that PRG as a circuit with one-way function gates in it. What our, construction, what our impossibility result does not capture, however, are situations where you would garble a circuit that has, that in addition to one-way function gates, also has a garb or eval gates in it, okay? And essentially what happens is that when you evaluate such a garble circuit, you might see another garble circuit and you might evaluate that garble circuit that might uh, lead to another garble circuit. And uh, the analysis will, will, will become much more challenging. Okay, 
And um, in particular, this kind of usage falls under the monolithic framework of Garg, Mahmoudi, and Amir. Okay, and uh, extending our impossibility result to this uh, framework uh, remains as an open problem. Okay, there are also uh, a couple of uh, previous related separation results that I want to cover. First, uh, a result by uh, Brakersky et al. shows that you cannot build public key encryption with perfect correctness from one-way functions using non-black box techniques that involve um, NISIC proofs for circuit relations with one-way function gates in them. Okay. Uh, as, as one of the contributions of our work that I'm not going to talk about uh, in this talk, we show how to capture their NISIC type techniques using, uh, via our or, uh, oracles and uh, how to extend their impossibility result to the case where the public encryption might uh, have uh, decryption error. Yes. You, no, 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 okay, so uh, that, so no, 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 so in that construction, uh, what happens is that uh, you will shift uh, the error from the encryption algorithm to the choice of the public key. You will make sure that with respect to almost all choices of the public key, you will, you will not have uh, any decryption error. So it, uh, it, it, yes, 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 almost perfect. No, 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 because uh, the challenge is uh, you might get unlucky, you might sample an oracle with respect to which things will be incorrect, okay? And, uh, and uh, the analysis will become really uh, non-trivial there. Okay, as uh, Puya mentioned, uh, the impossibility result of Impactliosi and Rudish is very challenging. And then uh, Brakersky et al. shows a very nice argument that if you want to restrict your, yourself to perfectly complete PKE, there is a very nice easy to understand uh, impo uh, impossibility results of, uh, of uh, PKE from one-way functions, okay? So uh, another result by Asharov and Segev shows that you cannot build public encryption from one-way functions and secret key functional uh, encryption for circuits with uh, one-way function gates. Uh, essentially, this, it, it results, this result rules out the possibility of using non-projective but reusable garbled circuits as a way of bridging the gap between a public key encryption and a one-way functions. But we uh, focus on projective garbling, which is a property that is crucially used in most of the applications of garbling. Okay. Okay, so now that uh, we saw the motivations, let me tell you how to uh, build our ideal oracles for realizing one-way functions and, uh, and uh, garbling schemes. Okay, so um, if you want to realize the one-way function part, uh, you can do it by having a random oracle f. Yes. Okay. Okay, now remember we would like to be able to uh, garble circuits with one-way function gates in them. And uh, if we do this by adding two oracles, garb and eval, that in some sense provide ideal garbling for circuits with one-way function gates, okay? Uh, what this means is that uh, the oracle garb is defined in a totally random manner, okay? The oracle garb by, by itself doesn't have any meanings. Now the oracle eval is going to give semantics to the oracle garb in the usual sense. Oh, do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. Okay, so now uh, if you stop here, we will have a problem. Namely, namely the oracle uh, O is too strong. It is too strong that it, that, that it gives you public key encryption. Even it gives you deniable uh, public key encryption. And you can bring perfect structure to the age of kiosks and build trapdoor permutations and everything. Okay, so, uh, so for example, if you want to obfuscate a circuit, you, you will just output the garbled circuit, and you will also output uh, all the uh, labels. And this will be fine because uh, all our oracles are random. So now, this is the point that we are going to make use of uh, the one-time security property of garbled circuits that I alluded to at the beginning of my talk. Namely, garbled circuits uh, only uh, ensure privacy when you evaluate the garbled circuit on a, on a single sequence of 
uh, garbled labels. So capturing this intuition, we will add uh, another OLA called ref that uh, that a given two valid sequences of garbled labels, it, it just spits out C. Okay? Now, uh, now as the main re uh, result of our paper, we show that any public key encryption that might make use of the oracles F, garb, and eval can be broken by an adversary that acquired the same oracles uh, as well as ref. And this turns out to be sufficient uh, for our purposes because you can realize garbling, uh, you can realize garbling schemes uh, without calling ref. Okay, uh, how much time do I have? Three minutes, okay. Okay. So now, uh, it, it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Because uh, the base it primitives are a one-way function and uh, a garbling scheme, right? So uh, a one-way function can be realized just by calling f. Uh, a garbling scheme can be realized uh, the garbling scheme construction can be realized by only calling garb and eval. The rev part will only participate in the security proof. But then you only, you only get like a, you only rule out two black reductions and not three black right? No, no, no. So uh, fully black box reductions uh, with respect to these oracles. Yes. No, no, so uh, we don't really need to assume that uh, the candidate public encryption uh, it might call ref. So the, the, that will not be sufficient, the, the, that will not be uh, needed for our separation proofs. Uh, it will be a relativizing a reduction, as opposed to, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, I won't have time to talk about all the details uh, of our proofs, but uh, let me give you uh, the high level uh, approach that we took. Okay, um, at a high level, um, if we show how to reduce our impossibility problem to the problem of impact Viazio and British. And we do this via a compilation technique. Namely, we show how to compile any candidate public encryption that uh, makes use of the oracles F, GARB, and eval into a compiled scheme which is almost as correct and as secure as the original scheme, but which does not call uh, eval at all, okay? So the significance of removing eval queries is that it, the compiled scheme uh, only calls the oracles F and GARP, and that these two oracles are nothing but two independent random oracles. So, so what we will be, um, uh, in the random oracle world. And by the result of Impact Riazio and Rudish, we have a poly query attack against the compiler scheme. And our security reduction will show that you can uh, reduce uh, any attack against the compiler scheme into an attack against the original scheme by, uh, by making use of all the oracles uh, as well as rev. Okay, so uh, this is where the Oracle Rev will participate in the whole picture. Okay, so yes, okay, and uh, yeah, okay, and uh, and uh, the way that uh, we get rid of eval queries is one step at a time, where we first um, get rid of eval queries from the key generation algorithm, and then we will do it from the encryption algorithm, and then we will do it from the decryption algorithm. And then at the end, we will, we will have a poly query attack. And if we apply our security reduction sequentially, we will get an attack uh, against the original scheme. Okay, so I don't have time to talk about how to re uh, remove eval queries from, from the individual algorithms. So let me jump quickly uh, to, the, to, to the summary part. Uh, I cannot hear you. Yeah, yeah, so the magic is that uh, the security of garbled circuits is based on this fact that, uh, that you have to evaluate the circuit on a single sequence 
of uh, garbled inputs, okay? And uh, what is going to happen is that uh, each algorithm, say the key generation algorithm, is going to run the encryption algorithm many times in his head to, to get a sense of what eval queries are uh, likely. And then uh, he will put some hints uh, in the public key and uh, it will help the, yeah. Right, so, yeah. Okay, so uh, we showed that uh, you cannot build public encryption from one-way functions and, uh, and the gobbling schemes for circuits with uh, one-way function gates. And also, uh, in our paper, we showed how to extend the results uh, to, to the case of constant round key exchange protocols. And uh, as a couple of open problems, uh, we would like to be able to extend our impossibility result to, to the case where uh, we are also allowed to gobble circuits that have gobbling gates in them. And finally, we'd like to see that whether our impossibility result um, extends to key exchange protocols uh, with a polynomial number of rounds. Okay, thank you.